So, welcome to this lecture. So, in the last few lectures, we studied the topological property of being connected, connected and path connected. and saw several examples. So, uh, some two examples which we did not see were, so the problems of whether S O N U N are connected. or path connected will be pending, will be taken up later. So, we need to develop a few more tools before we can answer the question of whether S O N and U N are path connected. So, however, for the next few lectures, we will study the property of being compact okay so let's begin with the definition of a host of topological space so let x be a topological space So, we say that x is host of if for points x 1 distinct points x 1 and x 2 in x. So, we have our x, we have x 1 here and we have x 2 here. So, there should be two small open sets which contain x 1 and x 2. Uh, which are disjoint, right? So we can take any two distinct points x one and x two, and there exists open sets u one and u two such that x one belongs to u one, x two belongs to u two, and u one intersection u two is empty, and u one and u 2 are disjoint. If this happens for all pairs of distinct points x 1 and x 2 then we say x is host of. Okay. So, here are some easy exercises. Okay. If x and y are host of then the product with the product topology is host of. So, let us see how to do this. Uh, so, so let us say we have two points x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. So now, uh, since x 1 y 1 is not equal to x 2 y 2, so this implies either uh, y 1 is not equal to y 2 or x 1 is not equal to x 2. Okay. So, let us simply assume that. So, let us assume that. 
y 1 is not equal to y 2 right. So, then our y 1 is here I am sorry y 1 is here and y 2 is here. So, since y is first off this implies there exists open sets such that y 1 belongs to b 1 y 2 belongs to b 2 and b 1 intersection b 2 is empty right. So, this is our b 2 this could be our v 1 right. So, then we know that. So, then x cross v 1 and x cross v 2 are open sets in the product topology. x cross y right. So, this is x cross b 2 and this is x cross v 1 right. So, clearly x 1 comma y 1 is in x cross b 1, x 2 comma y 2 is in x cross b 2 and the intersection is empty right. So, this shows that x cross y is host of. So, in the same way we can easily check that if x i for i and i is a family of topological spaces of host of topological spaces then the product So, obviously, every time we talk of the product as I said, we are giving it the product topology is hostel. Okay, and imitate the proof of the proof of one. The same proof as in the previous case will work, and I will leave it as an exercise. So, finally, the third easy example or easy exercises x is host of and y contained in x is a subspace. Then y is host of right. So, let us quickly see this. So, suppose this is our x and let us say y is this. Yeah. So, if you take any y 1 and y 2 then since x is host of there is an open set u u 1 containing y 1 u 2 containing y 2 such that u 1 intersection u 2 is empty right. So, then clearly u 1 intersection y contains y 1 u 2 intersection y contains y 2 and these are disjoint open subsets of y right thus y is host of okay so the above ex exercises give us plenty of examples of host of topological spaces.
So, we are mostly interested in Hausdorff topological spaces and uh, we will almost deal exclusively with Hausdorff topological spaces for the rest of this course. Yeah. So, for the rest of this course. we will be interested only in host of topological spaces. So, if nothing is mentioned, then it is safe to assume that the topological space we are working with is host of. Okay. So, we have defined what host of means. So, now we are ready to define compact compactness. So, let x be a Hausdorff topological space. Okay. So, we shall say that x is compact if the following happens. So, every open cover u i i in i. So, what do we mean by an open cover? It means each u i, we are given a family of open sets u i and the union of all of them is equal to x. Yeah. So, we are given any open cover and given any open cover has a finite sub cover. That is, there exist finitely many indices i1, i2, up to in, such that x can actually be covered by these finitely many open subsets. Okay, uij, sorry. So, let us see an example of a topological space which is not Hausdorff, I am sorry, which is not compact. So, example, R is not compact. Okay. So, to say that R is not compact, it is enough to produce an open cover for R which has no finite sub cover. Yeah. So, that is easy. So, what we do is we take any n, n plus 1 and we take n minus 1 by 4 and n plus 1 plus 1 by 4. Right? So, then we can write r as the union over n in integers n minus 1 by 4 and n plus 1 plus 1 by 4. So, uh, clearly clearly if we take uh, any finite subset, so clearly any finite sub collection in this union it will not cover R, any finite sub collection. of intervals of the type n minus 1 by 4 comma n plus 1 plus 1 by 4 will not cover r right so thus this cover has no finite sub cover Thus, R is not compact. Right. Okay. 
and exactly so r is not compact so now we want to construct some very uh, basic examples of compact spaces and prove some very basic results about compact spaces which is exactly the same as we did when we talked about connectedness so the first result we are going to prove is the interval 0 1 is compact so the proof is very similar to how we prove that 0 1 is connected so let's prove this So, suppose we are given an open cover where I u i be an open cover. So, our aim is to find a finite sub cover of this. So, we need to show that this has a finite sub cover. Okay. So, as before we let s be equal to those x in 0 1 such that this when we look at this interval the closed interval 0 x is covered by finitely many u s. Okay. So, clearly 0 belongs to s right as so for 0 to belong to s what we need is 0 comma 0 this is just the single set 0 is covered by 1 u i right. So, we, we can just take any u i naught which contains 0 or any u j let us say. any u j which covers which contains 0 and then obviously, this interval which is just this 0 is contained in this u j right. Uh, okay. So, when I say covered by finitely many u i's I mean that this interval 0 x is contained in finitely many u i's union of finite union of u i's ok yeah. So, let x naught be equal to supremum of x in s x yeah. So, we claim that x naught is also in s so, let us prove this. So, there is a sequence in x n converging to x naught with x n in s right. So, let x naught be in some open set. So, we have 0, we have 1 and let us say our x naught is here. So, x naught is going to be in some open set u i naught. Okay. So, there is an epsilon, epsilon positive such that b epsilon x naught intersected with 0 1 is contained in u i naught. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and since these x n s are converging to x naught all but finitely many x n s are in this interval right. So, all these x n s eventually all of them will land inside this small open neighborhood around x naught. Okay. So, uh, we choose some x m in p epsilon x naught intersected with 0 1. Right. So, this 0 this x naught this is our interval and let us say x m is here. 
let us say this one yeah. So, then as x m is in s this implies 0 comma x m is covered by or let us say is contained in a finite union of u s. in a finite union of u i s right and moreover we also know that this interval moreover this interval x m comma x naught is contained in b epsilon x naught intersected 0 1 which is contained in this u i naught. So, this implies that uh, 0 comma x naught which is equal to 0 comma x m union x m comma x naught which is contained in 0 comma x m union u i naught right. Now, this interval 0 comma x m is contained in a finite union and therefore, 0 comma x naught is contained in that finite union along with u i naught which is therefore, also going to be finite. So, therefore, we conclude that 0 comma x naught is contained in a finite union of the UIs. Yeah. So, thus x naught is in S. Okay. So, this proves our claim. the claim that x naught is in S. Yeah. So, now next we claim that next we claim x naught is equal to 1. Yeah. So, once again if x naught is strictly less than 1 then uh, that would mean that there is some. So, let me just make a picture here once again. And this is our epsilon, and these are xm. That would mean that there is some epsilon positive such that uh, x naught comma x naught plus epsilon is contained in ui naught. Right. So again, uh, so. This implies that 0 comma x naught plus epsilon, which we can write as 0 comma x m union x this x naught plus epsilon is contained in in a finite union of the ui. So, this implies that x naught plus epsilon belongs to S which contradicts the assumption that x naught versus supremum right. So, thus x naught has to be 1 x naught cannot be strictly less than 1. Uh, so, the so, and since x naught is equal to 1, this implies that the 0 comma 1, we have already seen that x naught is in S. So, therefore, this implies that 0 comma 1 is contained in a finite union of the u s. Right. So, thus, uh, there is a finite subcover is contained in j equal to 1 to n some u i j. This implies that so therefore, this open cover so this this proves that the open cover we started with
has a finite subcover. Thus, this interval is compact. So this proves this completes the proof of theorem. So we will end this lecture here.